Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we will be reviewing the Edwin Frenbach Intrinsic Wash Processed Panama from Black and White Coffee Roasters. And there's the bag right there. And Black and White, based out of Wake Forest, North Carolina. And they're a coffee roaster that has appeared on this channel multiple times before, and also a coffee roaster that has earned themselves a reputation as being one of the more experimental coffee roasters in the United States. And along with that, they've earned themselves a number of fans, as I've heard so many people label Black and White as one of their favorite coffee roasters in the entire world. And it's for that exact same reason that I've steered clear of a lot of their coffees recently because I found their more experimental offerings to be a little bit too heavy and out there for me, which is a little unfortunate given that I really enjoyed a lot of their more standard washed and natural coffees over the year. So that's where this one comes into play as it's a combination of the two. It's a safe sounding coffee, however, it's still an experimental processed coffee. So I'm curious to see how this one turns out as it's also a Panamanian coffee and I love reviewing Panamanian coffees. This right here is day 39. And Black and White does have a brew guide on their website. It's a very loose brew guide and it roughly translates to a 16.67 to one water to coffee ratio. And they suggest between 195 degrees Fahrenheit and 205 degrees Fahrenheit. And I like this coffee best through the automatic coffee maker. So there's not really a recipe for that right there. Now roast profile for this one's also kind of interesting because they label it as a light on the bag. However, I would say that this coffee had a fair bit more development than I think I was expecting, and it's entirely possible it could have been attributed to the unique processing method that they had. This one for me felt a little closer to a medium in terms of that roast profile. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 19, first impression, and I ran into the Chemex and the cup did have a lot more clarity than I think I was expecting. Truth be told, given I've never had this processing method before, I had no idea what to expect from this coffee. However, it didn't come out overly fermenty, but it did have a slight roasty quality to it with plenty of this undefined brightness right at the forefront. It wasn't skewing particularly in any specific direction other than maybe a slight red fruit. So I honestly didn't know what to take away from this coffee as I had never really tasted anything like this before. It honestly just kind of tasted like generic coffee. So we move on to day 21 as I ran it through the V60 and it was another relatively nondescript day as the cup seems to be lacking any sort of defining profile to it, especially at warmer temperatures. Now it does open up a little bit as it cools down with a moderate smokiness and somewhat of this bright fruit in the finish. But at this time again, I'm kind of stumped as it continues to remind me of coffee with an undefined brightness. Day 23. Back through the Chemex, and again, I'm continuing to have issues kind of tasting this coffee specifically as there was some more of a nondescript generic coffee component to it with a slightly roasty quality. I couldn't figure out what was going on with this one if maybe it needed even more of an extended rest, but at this point, this is actually starting it kind of late for a black and white coffee in general, and I'm still kind of stumped by this one. As it does cool all the way down to room temperature, there's a little bit more of this kind of candy pear-like aspect to the cup with the listed cherry somewhat present and a little bit of an undefined citric component to it. So I'm starting to pull out slightly more from it. However, it's still coming out as a very unusual cup of coffee. Day 25, ran it through the April dripper and it's the most vibrant that I've been to this point, but it's still a relatively tame coffee in general as the slight roasty quality is present yet again with a slight stone fruit aspect and a moderate brightness. It has that slight Panamanian cookie-like sweetness I list with so many non-Panamanian Gesha coffees and even Panamanian Gesha coffees. So this was slightly better, but even then it wasn't skewing particularly in any specific direction. Day 29, coffee is finally opening up as there's a little bit more of the sugary sweetness present within this coffee. I think that they have a brown sugar note list on here. That makes a lot of sense. There's a little bit more of that smoky quality present yet again, and the fruit components are opening up a little bit more. Slightly bright citric component, a slightly cleaner cherry. As mentioned, it's not a particularly fermenty or funky coffee in general. However, I think the smokiness is just kind of marring any sort of flavor profile that I'm trying to pick up from it. Day 31, back to the same issues as I really struggle to get a foothold within this coffee as it's smoky with little else defining the characteristics of it. Slight bit of a vague fruit that's seemingly reminiscent of the listed pear, and maybe that's what it is because I don't think pears taste like too much. They don't have a very strong taste to them in general, but tricky to get much else from this coffee. 
it's been inconsistent as well because there are times where I was able to pick up some slight red fruit components, some slight bright citric components to it, but at no two stages would I say it was just as uh, defined as previous days. Day 34 is still not saying much of a change to the coffee, so I don't necessarily think it was an issue of letting it continue to rest. I kind of feel like this is the way the coffee was in general, as it remains quite smoky with a slightly sweet fruit component buried underneath what was a pretty neutral cup of coffee in general. A little bit more of a chocolate characteristic, but nothing else worth noting on this day. And day 36 ran into the automatic coffee maker, and that's why this was my favorite brew method for this coffee, because I was able to get the most vibrancy from the coffee, with the exception of maybe the April Dripper. And it's what I continue to work with on this coffee. It's what I'm working with here on day 39 as well. As well, it does have a very quick finish to it. There's a little bit more of a fruit brightness at the forefront with a slightly less smoky aspect. It does lose the vibrancy a little quick on its cooldown as it does continue to skew back in the direction of that somewhat undefined brightness. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. And I hope this tasting wheel kind of summarizes what I was getting from this coffee, but let's go ahead and start with the level fours and we have three of those and We'll start with the body at level four. Yeah, and I think that might be attributed to running it through the automatic coffee maker because it did have a fair bit of body to the cup by the end. And that was one of the more, I guess, defining profiles to it. It felt in a sense, a very traditional cup of coffee given that it tasted like generic coffee to me. So that's right there at that level four with a fair bit of body to it. Chocolate, level four. Might be a little generous, but given that, again, it didn't have anything particularly defining and there were certain days where I'm like, okay, maybe a more robust chocolate is what I'm feeling from this. That's where it ended up at that level four mark. Smokiness, level four. That's what I'm saying about the roast profile. They have this listed as a light and I'm not entirely sure what I'm getting from this coffee, but whatever it is, it's coming out very smoky heavy, very robust in general. So smokiness was very high in this coffee for me. And no matter what I did, I couldn't tone it down too much. The automatic coffee maker was what really uh, contributed to that. And starting this coffee at 205 to begin with, which is a very kind of safe way to start a coffee, it still had so many of those smoky components and the more I kind of tried to cool it down, it didn't necessarily yield too many positive results. A bunch of level threes. We'll start with the bitterness at a level three. That is actually coffee bitterness. So I don't really know what to make of that as it continues to yield this kind of traditional coffee profile to it. Savoriness, level three. Yeah, uh, that nothing particularly defined in terms of the savory direction, so don't really know what to say on that one. Cleanliness, level three. That's a very interesting one, and that's one I discussed briefly at one point, but it doesn't have any sort of fermentiness or funkiness, which I could have fully expected given it's a unique experimental processing method to begin with. However, I mentioned that it does have that very strong smoky quality to it, so it's very hard to push it above that level three given that, and that it didn't have a particularly defined flavor profile in any specific direction. If anything, it's actually on the slightly lower side of the level three because of a lack of definition. Finish, level three. It's always kind of rare to see a coffee go below a level four, but this one right here had a very quick finish to it in general. Um, given that it wasn't a very strong flavored coffee to begin with, having a very quick finish and not being able to pick up too many of the components within it didn't necessarily help that either. Spice, salt, level three. Again, it's just one of those things where as I was making this tasting wheel, I'm like, I can feel a fair bit of saltiness. I can feel a fair bit of this kind of undefined spice to it, but nothing I could specifically identify or label given that it was a little bit more generic than overly specific. Citrus fruit, level three. In terms of fruits, that was the most defined one I was experiencing. And at times it was a little bit bitter, but for the most part, it was just honestly a bright citrus, which is interesting given that the acidity on this one is at a level two, as there wasn't a whole lot of really bright acidity within this coffee. And then um, probably the last two things we should discuss is the acidity, which I just mentioned. I might have expected going into this given the light profile that they had on here that I was going to be experiencing a lot of bright acidity to it, but honestly very minimal. One of the least acidic coffees I think I've had in a very long time that could be attributed to running it through the automatic coffee maker, but <clears throat> nothing overly specific there. And then the sweetness at a level two, which is I think the lowest sweetness I've had from any coffee we've reviewed, at least in terms of a full bag of coffee we've reviewed on this channel this year. I don't really know what to make of that. There was a slight kind of candied pear sweetness I could experience, but 
I would not say at any point there was a very strong like brown sugar that had listed on here. Could get a slight bit of sugar, could get a slight bit of fruit sweetness, but even then they were kind of at the bare minimum. And that's why it reached that level two mark and just right there at the level two. Not too much to add to that, honestly. So honestly, yeah, this is the tasting wheel I was experiencing from this coffee, which is a very different tasting wheel in general. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. I feel like in all of the reviews we've ever done on this channel, this is the one I've been maybe the most stumped by. I don't understand this coffee. I don't necessarily understand the direction that this coffee was going in. As I didn't agree with a lot of the flavor profiles within this one. I couldn't pull them out. And you can always blame the brewer. So it's entirely possible that this one's on me. And no matter what I did, I couldn't figure out the best way to get this coffee. You could maybe even say that uh, today, 19, this coffee could have been past its best and it was already starting to taper off, which happens with a lot of American coffees in general. That could have been what happened here too, but for the most part, I don't really know what to say about this coffee. It wasn't my preference. It was just nothing like what I was expecting. Type of person I would suggest this coffee to, the best direction I can point anyone towards for this coffee is a very traditional coffee. As it did have a very heavy bodied profile to it. A lot of the traditional coffee aspects to it, you know, a very robust chocolate, a very robust smokiness, and it didn't necessarily have a whole lot of brightness to it. And it just kind of lent itself to a much more traditional coffee drinker in general. Kind of the best way I can point this coffee, kind of the best final thoughts I have on this coffee, so I'll leave this one at that. If you've by chance had an opportunity to try this one, would love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Edwin Fehrenbach Intrinsic Wash Processed Panama from Black and White Coffee Roasters. Thank you for watching.